If you're serious about 3D printing, then you'll need to use support materials now and then for your 3D printing projects. But why is it that so many 3D printing enthusiasts avoid support material like it's the worst thing in the world? Well, in this two-part 3D printing 101 series, we're going to be talking about support materials and how you can best use them in your 3D printing projects. Let's get started. Hello, my name is Angus and welcome to 3D Printing 101 here on Maker's Muse. So if you're new to 3D printing, you might be downloading files and they may have descriptions with things like prints without supports or support material needed for this 3D print. But these statements may be a little bit confusing if you don't know what supports mean in relation to FDM 3D printing. You see, 3D printing is a layer by layer process like we've described in our 3D Printing 101 video on infill. FDM is quite unique in that it lays down these layers within an open airspace one after another. So if you imagine this design to be 3D printed, that's all well and good. It'll actually probably print quite easily as the layers more or less line up with the previous layers. But what about this model? As you can see, once it gets up to a certain height, the machine will try to 3D print that part in mid-air. And it's not going to work very well and most certainly will lead to a catastrophic 3D print failure. I find the best way to describe support materials to people is as if you're building a watchtower. You can't just have the watchtower platform hovering magically in midair. You need something underneath it to support it. And that's what support materials do for certain geometries when you're 3D printing them. The support materials job is to be built at the same time as the 3D print layer by layer. But once you get to those overhangs, there'll be something underneath it to hold it in place. Otherwise to support it. And these supports are designed to be removed after the print is finished. So there's two different ways you can do this. You can actually build supports in a different material and dissolve it afterwards using a dual extruder machine. Or what I'm going to be talking about in this tutorial is using what's known as breakaway supports, which are designed to be pulled away mechanically after the print's completed. Well, that's great, Angus, you might be saying, how do I know I need supports with my 3D print? Well, actually, that's a really good question. In the early days of 3D printing on consumer machines, you actually had to design your own supports into your 3D models to be broken away afterwards. And that was extremely tedious, as you could imagine. But thanks to the modern day slices like Simplify 3D, you can actually design supports automatically or even manually add them into the object before slicing. So let's jump into Simplify 3D to look at various settings that define support material. So this is the mini nuke pot that I designed last year. And this is a fantastic example as to how support material can greatly empower your 3D printing. Here we have a model which could not really succeed without support, but we're gonna try printing it without support anyway and see what happens. So I'm gonna predict that these may work, these overhangs here, they're a bit of a bridge, but they might droop a little bit. But here we can see where the bottom of the, the bomb area is. That's got nothing to hold it in place. Similarly, here the middle area has nothing to hold it or these fins. So I suspect they're going to fail horribly and we're going to end up with a lot of noodles. But regardless, let's go to try to print it. And we'll print it at a 0.25 layer height with three top fills, three bottom and three outside. So here we are, the print time will be an hour and 17 minutes and uses 16 grams of material. So because we don't have support, it will be quicker and use less material, but you can definitely see once it gets here, it's gonna be interesting. So let's go to the time-lapse. So as the print starts, you can see it doesn't hit the build platform properly, but as it starts to get to those overhanging areas, it just starts trying to print bits of 3D print in mid-air. And although it does a valiant effort, some of the bits do actually work, which is surprising, but most of them just fall into a heap of 3D print noodles. So as the print continues, it does actually do okay on the fins, but then it gets to the bottom of the bomb casing. And that's again where it's just printing in midair and actually just makes this pile of noodles till it slowly kind of recovers and the print continues on. So as you can see by these pictures, the bottom of the print is completely unacceptable. It's just being dragged around by the extruder because there was nothing for the print to adhere to. There's nothing underneath it to support it. Right, so next we're going to try it with support material. This is going to be interesting because in my experience, support material generation tends to struggle with supporting very thin overhangs like these. So we may need to use manual supports. And in Simplify 3D, we can do very powerful manual supports, but depending on the slicer you're using, you might not have this option. So to use manual supports, let's go under Tools and Customize Support Structures. So under this menu, we have a few different options. We have different types of support. We can build normal, which will build everywhere where it's needed and from build platform only, which means it will build only from the bottom of the build platform, but it won't build support material on top of the part. 
So for this, we're going to go with normal and then we have support pillar resolution. So by default, this is set to four and I suspect for this model, four will be too coarse, but let's see how it goes. And max overhang angle from 90 degrees, 90 being no support material at all. Let's go with 60. So that means 30 degrees will be supported and generate automatic support. So like I suspected, these areas are too thin to be picked up by a four millimeter support pillar resolution, but it has detected that the overhang here needs support. So let's just try clearing that and let's turn it down to two millimeters and I'll generate automatic support. So you can see here, they were much more successful. So two millimeters might be a good support pillar resolution for this print. But you can see it's done some erroneous support pillars, which we don't want. And it's very good practice to support things with clumps of support material rather than the single pillars, which are very fragile and often break. So we don't want that. So this is where manual placement comes in handy. So let's go to remove and let's remove these erroneous ones we don't want. So is there any more around here? Yep, there was one there. That looks good to me. And everywhere else we want supported in the middle has automatically been generated, but we might want to add some more around here and some more around these areas. So let's go to add new support structures and the resolution we want for the pillars is two for this very thin area. And we just click them in. They can be overlapping themselves. It's no problem at all. In fact, it's actually probably good practice because it will lead to a stronger support structure. Looks good to me and add these ones in as well. Looks good. And these here as well. So I'm looking at the bottom of the part here. I also want some here as well. It seems to have missed there. And once again, very thin areas tend to get missed by automatic support generation. I've just put one there by accident. I can delete that afterwards. Looks good. So we've got a nice thick clump. Also being Simplify 3D, there is the option to do Control Z to undo if you make a mistake. So I'm just gonna remove this one here. So you can see quite clear that support material that we've added will hold up these areas as they start getting printed as that layer forms instead of drooping down because of gravity. So I'm done with that and we can prepare to print. And this is a fantastic example of why Simplify 3D helps you every step of the way. So you have manual support defined for model process one, but your support process settings have support generation disabled. Would you like to enable it? Yes, I would. So how fantastic is that? It's detected that I've gone to the effort of making manual supports. I'll go back here and show you that. But I had support off, so make sure it's on. Also important to note these settings here. So support, you can, if you have two extruders on your machine, you can allocate support to your other extruder. And this is important if you wanna do things experimenting with stuff like soluble support materials, which I'm not gonna go into here, but it can be done. And then we have different infill percentages. So similarly, when we talked about infill inside the part, support can have different infill. So generally for very small support structures, you want a higher infill, and for large support structures, you want a lower infill. And the thing about Simplify 3D is it will let you do a low infill and then a denser infill as you get closer to the part. So this is actually, this looks quite good, 30 to 70. We'll see how this goes. And a few other settings you can play around with if you need to. The horizontal offset is important. If you're finding your support material sticks too much to your part, you might want to increase this number. And if you're finding the support material isn't sticking enough or it fails to hold the part in place, you might want to decrease this number. So 0.3 is a good default and it seems to work quite well. So I'm happy with that. Let's see how it looks. All right. So if we go down to this point, this is what we want to see. So this is the support material that's going to be formed as it starts building up towards our part. So you can see as it starts forming there, there will be plenty of support for it. If I go quite slowly, let's go back in time. So let's slow it down quite a bit. So you can see as the part forms, there will be plenty of support for it. The only one thing that I might comment on by pausing there is this detail. When it comes to form these ones, the angle might not be correct. You can see there. So we can actually change our support angle as well. And it might be worth demonstrating that in this video, just in case you want to change it. So under your support settings, we can change our support angle angle. So it's set at zero. Let's make that 45 to see how that looks. 
add angle and remove the 40, zero. There we go. So we now set it to 45. And you can see the support angle has completely changed. But the benefit of that is now in these areas, the angle supports more of the print as we go up through the part. Similarly, it does it there as well. So again, there's no perfect way of doing this because you can see maybe by changing it to 45 now here might not have as much support. So the one way around that would be to make our support more dense. Let's increase it to 50 and 80. Let's see how that goes. And once again, the wonderful world of G-Code Preview. So you can see much more support now, much denser, but by being denser, means it'll support the part better. And I am pretty happy with that. So this will be a really nice print and in my opinion, should turn out really well. You also notice that it only takes a little bit longer, one hour, 34 minutes and uses maybe five grams or so more plastic. So not that much more to guarantee a successful print. Let's send it to the printer and see how the time that's for this one goes. So like before, the print does stick to the build platform properly, but here you can see the support material being printed at the same time. And it's these supports that make such a big difference to the quality of the final 3D print because they're there and stop the print printing over thin air and drooping down. And especially in the case of printing the bomb casing, it means that this underside curve is fully supported. So when printing with supports like this, they're the same material and they break away. But I found when I took this off the print platform, most of them just broke away by themselves anyway. And the rest were easily removed with pliers. And the quality difference here is just plain to see. This print needed supports and the extra effort that goes into support removal really makes a huge difference. There is really no contest between the print that was done without supports and the print that was done with supports. So I hope this video helped you get a better understanding on what support material is and how you can use it for your 3D prints. But don't miss part two, where you put all of this theory into practice on some really difficult to print 3D objects. Like this video if you found it useful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future 3D printing 101 videos here on Maker's Muse. Let me know in the comments on what you'd like to see in future 3D printing 101 videos and I'll see you later.